Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 62. We're going to go with Jeremy for the BIPCOT NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So today we have Eric July, who is a uh, volunteerist and rapper. He's, uh, you can find him on the, web, uh, on the Facebook pages backwards and Eric July TX. Uh, well, it's just Eric July on Facebook, but the URL is Eric July TX, um, and he's uh, been uh, getting pretty, uh, pretty popular in uh, the and the Loudwire uh, contest w- with his new song Statism uh, with Craig Mabbitt, and uh, he's gotten a lot of support from the volunteers anarchist community. So uh, we're trying to help him out with that. So Eric, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Man, appreciate you. This is uh, overdue, man. I'm glad to be on. I know, man. The last, last we 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 had you scheduled. I don't know, maybe a oh. few months back, and uh, some stuff came up. You had like some trouble with uh, family, and you were like, "I can't come." Forgot about. <laughs> I totally forgot about the podcast, and I was like, "Man, I understand." So yeah, we just. Glad I'm just glad. Been. I'm glad you had a, a free night to come on. Uh, been wanting you to come on and talk about what you're doing with backwards for a while, man. It's a really cool uh, band. It's a really. I really. I jam out. I listen to you guys all the time. I really do. Uh, I you know I'm I'm always about. Uh, Forcing you programming yourself and forcing uh, yourself to see the world the way you want yourself to see it, and not other people doing that. You know, like Fox News or whoever, like programming you. <laughs> right. So uh, you know, I think you know the more you listen to like voluntarist rappers or 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 anarchist bands or whatever, that that stuff gets put into your head subliminally, and it keeps reinforcing it in your head, and it doesn't, you know. It, it helps shape your worldview in a way that I think is more conducive to individuality. And I think everyone should be expressing their individuality. That's, I think that's lacking right now. And I, I see guys like you fucking shattering every stereotype. You were a gangbanger. And now you're, you know, you're a Christian. Uh, you're in a, a huge band that's, that's about what y'all are, y'all are blowing up in your area. And and you're you're getting all this this notoriety, all these views on everything, and you're you're staying consistent, and it's just great to see individuals being individuals. Absolutely, no, that that's what it's all about, man. That's what I'm about. That's what uh, um, you know, it, it's just with me and how I approach things. Is I was always thinking about you know when I talk about libertarianism and anarchism and thinking about ways to kind of. Uh, I guess, get the message out there outside of, you know, the political process and the political arena. And, you know, I just felt like it was my calling to really just, you know, utilize the talents that, you know, I've developed over the, over the years, you know, being a rapper pretty much, you know, hell, since as long as I could, you know, <laughs> remember. And, uh, you know, being a, a, a metal vocalist for, you know, almost, you know, a little over half a decade and uh, pointing bands and, you know, when we formed, I formed backwards with my, you know, fellow bandmates. It was the under the idea that, all right, we're not going to sugarcoat anything. We had all experienced being in signed bands and experienced being in touring acts. And, uh, you know, we just, we had an idea. And, you know, we took a couple of songs to really get uh, our footing and, and notice, like, man, we're really on to something. Uh, you know, we can spread liberty. We can spread these different kind of ideas. Uh, ideas that uh, really aren't really being represented in, in, in our particular, definitely in our particular genre. So um, again, it was just about trying to utilize different different uh, methods. And I feel like music is a great way to infiltrate because, you know, culture, every, you know, sometimes with libertarianism, I think sometimes it gets put in this in this box of like, it doesn't have, it can't have culture, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and, and my thing is, I, th- I think that's really uh it's not a great representation of what libertarianism is it's not a great definitely you know and caps and volunteers it's just not a great representation you know you can have that kind of uh 
uh, that, that culture, and that's why I'm trying to infiltrate culture and arts uh, with being a musician and really putting that putting that uh, out there. Because it's one thing for me to talk it. Uh, that that's going to get across in certain ways to certain people, absolutely. But others, you know, you put it behind a beat or you put it behind some music. You know, sometimes they don't even know what they're what they're hearing until they have like thought it through. They're like, "Damn, this just this jams." Eric, just knowing what I know about linguistics and how they work, even if the radio's on and you can't hear what's going on, your brain still hears it and absorbs it. So even in a metal song, when they're going. Rah, 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 if they're making words, your brain is hearing it and it's con it's consuming it. It's getting it in there. So it that, that when you're saying the stuffs in your song, because I, I hear the lyrics, I've been listening to screamo and that genre for a long time, and I hear it and that you know it might be two years later that that song might pop back in their head and boom. And I really think you guys hit the head on the nail with Utopias Don't Exist. If you haven't yeah. heard that song from, I think that's really when you you hit it. Yeah, that, no, that that was, and it's funny that you mentioned Utopias because that was the, uh, you know, what song I remember me recording and I uh, remember me recording the uh, other vocalist Alex, you know, as a libertarian, and we're like, all right, man, let's, uh, you know, we got a song. This has got to be the first song off our debut album that we're recording. Uh, we want it to represent who we are. What route are we gonna go? And you know, we mapped out the song, and I just had so much to, you know, and I, I it, it, it was strategic in, in terms of what what we were talking about. You know, the first verse is about you know why are people putting their lives on the politicians, expecting them to, uh, you know, thinking that they're different, whether it be under the Republican ticket or the Democrat ticket, and thinking that you know there's some type of great great difference between uh, them. And honestly, you know, they want to utilize force and initiatory violence on everybody, you know what I mean? So talking about that and then, you know, me being, I, I also dig into social issues with me being African, uh, oh, okay. you know, a black person, you know, and, and it's like, you know, that second verse, it was, I, I, honestly, I feel like it was one of the, for me, you know, maybe not. No, I, lo I loved it. That Yeah, you know, that, 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 that to me, that, that verse, man, I remember writing it and I was like, it was like just flowing. It was almost like I wasn't even thinking. I wrote that probably in like, 10 minutes at, at, at the most, but it was just like, you know, my passion and everything that, that I talk about and my frustrations <laughs> with, uh, you know, black folks throwing and tossing their lives in the, in the politicians and not having this kind of accountability. You know, we're always talking about what the outside is doing, what white folks are doing and all of this and stuff. And we're never talking about accountability and, and responsibility and self ownership and, uh, and, and things of, of that nature. And it's so freaking, you know, you know, frustrating, um, and, and that verse right there probably represents all these, you know, the videos and everything I talk about, uh, at least regarding kind of the, I guess, the African-American community, so to speak. Uh, that one verse right there was just like, my feelings are, are right there in that particular verse. Don't say the verse, okay? Don't say it, because that <laughs> means somebody's going to have to go get a view on this. They're going to have to Google yeah, it. No, I'm going to... I, I I actually haven't listened to it. I'm going to have to check that oh, out. Oh, man, man. Just, that one. It yeah. was a valid shit shitting upon of a <laughs> politically protected class that needs some poking right now. Awesome. Absolutely. No. And, and, and again, it, it's hard because if, and this is being completely honest, if you guys say it uh, for whatever reason, you get your, you get your arguments dismissed. Like we're criticizing what, what black lives uh, matter or any kind of black organ, pro black organization. Um, and you criticize them, you get immediately um, and, and it's so frustrating because I see this happening. Even, you know, if you're not black and you come up with a, a legitimate argument, it's automatically dismissed as, as, as racist and, and and things of that nature. And, and, and it's so frustrating because it doesn't really we don't get to any kind of solutions. It doesn't advance the uh, conversation at, at, at all. Um, so it's like I almost feel it like, damn, I have to say something about because they can't they can't pull those kind of cards on me you know they can't pull any really card on me they can't say oh well you don't understand no i grew up gang banging in the same hood you guys <laughs> are talking about all oh, you racist no i'm i look i'm darker than y'all you know what i mean <laughs> so you know you, you can't pull those those cards and it's and with me i'm trying to kind of turn that mirror back on them because even some of the legitimate uh gripes that a lot of these organizations these black organizations have the core uh, is statism, and they just don't really, and even if they recognize it, they're like, oh, we just got to get the right people in office. Like, no, like, it's no, it's the, it's the entity itself that has been, you know, we talk about, you know, racism being endorsed by the state, 
you know, with power, slave power over. doesn't power doesn't recognize race. Exactly. You know right. what I mean? It, it, right. It's like it's like all of this with state is statism. We're like racism without statism. It really doesn't mean anything. You know, it's like, OK, so what you don't know, you dislike somebody uh, because they're they're white or they're brown or so what? You know what I mean? It's the one thing to say, I dislike you because. You're black, uh, you're brown, you're white. Uh, all right, but now I'm going to get this monopoly on violence and use it to, to annihilate you. That's completely different different topic. So, the, the, again, the core issue right here that we're talking about is statism. And that's what I'm trying to do is really turn that mirror on them and take that really, that logic uh, and that, that, uh, all the way to its uh, conclusion because that's what they, what they don't do. They just, uh, and they'll go butt dance this election for people like Bernie Sanders who was, Again, uh, it's not their savior. And in fact, but the but the core problem is the fact that they believe in, 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 that these entities like well, the government and these politicians are all legitimate and they they want them to kind of uh, save their lives. I think that 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 says right there, you're pretty much, uh, uh, I guess, selling yourself in, in, in the slavery uh, is really, I think, what it is, because you don't recognize that you own yourself. And if you recognize you own yourself and any sort of advancement is in, you know, the the hand of the uh, individual. Sure. Well, I mean, one of the things you said before about the fact that, you know, it, you're able to kind of turn the mirror back on them, which which is the only way it, it really can be done, unfortunately, because that's the point, because the, the reason they don't want to even hear the legitimate arguments is because most of them don't actually know how to argue. They don't know how to have a debate. They don't even know how to have a civil conversation. They only know how to be p polite until soul, until somebody Thomas disagrees soul. with them. And then as soon as, the, as soon as somebody disagrees with them, oh, no, now that's a problem. And they automatically go into the defensive. I mean, I've seen the same thing with people who, you know, if somebody like myself, if I criticize the military, I'm obviously discredited because I don't have it. You know, I, I was never there, so I can't speak. You know, it's the it's it's the same principle, I mean, unfortunately. You know, which what do you is think would happen if if me or you went into an alt right board and started spewing multiculturalism or something? You know? Well, yeah, right. we would get we would get yelled at. Well, so, exactly. I mean, so that that's that you know, and people are conditioned to work like that. People are conditioned to accept their own confirmation bias, and in the most part, like you were talking about with the the whole the overarching thing of statism, the no matter what the little differences are, the overarching thing that everybody is conditioned for is the same. It's to submit to a certain extent and that to that you have this illusion of freedom and these illusion of rights that you can use to punish the people you disagree with, as you were saying, which is just and that's and the vicious cycle just goes on and on because people don't want to they don't want to step back. And it's just easier to scream racist or uh, homophobe or, you know, or what, whatever or whatever or, or, or you know, anti-Semite, whatever it is, because the, the validity of your criticism has no bearing on what they're going to say to you. Because, again, they're conditioned and they're conditioned to think in, 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 a, in a, an emotional state. It's always in an emotional state. It's never in a logical state. It's never analytical. It's never, let's sit down and process this. Let's sit this down and think about this rationally. Why no, did it's, you say that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. It's, oh, this, this angers me. This, uh, this, this bothers me. I, something has to be done about it right now. And I'm not going to actually do anything about it, but I'm going to demand that somebody else... <laughs> who in turn right. <laughs> will sign some papers so that another person with a gun will put it to this person's head and say, no, you got to do this now or no, you can't do that. Absolutely. No, I mean, and that's, that's, uh, and it's funny that you mentioned that it was a great point and how it kind of creates this kind of circle, you know what I mean? Because what, what ends up happening is that uh, whatever demographic feel as, uh, feels as if they are oppressed, uh, you know, they are, right, I'm going to use the state, you know, and that's why it's always, that's why around, I guess uh, election time, people get so up in arms and, and and all amped up because everybody's wanting to use this this get power, you know, get this monopoly, get access and the keys to the, this uh, monopolized uh, use of force uh, to really uh, silence the the other side. You know what I mean? That's really all this is. It's a, it's a circle. This side gets uh, pressed by, uh, and it's really again, it's the state. You know, you people using the state. That's their that's their tool. 
that they're using um, to, to do it. And, you know, that per then a, a generation passed, and now this this demographic wants to use it to oppress the people to get them. It's just a creates this circle of uh, of nonsense. Is uh really really what it is, and the core it problem again is is within a state. Like, why would you want an entity that powerful uh to exist that in which you can really go do these dangerous uh things, and you can silence uh the people that you dis you disagree with, or to silence the people that you uh, uh that are on the opposite end of a certain argument. I mean, that's just so that's so dangerous. I don't know why you would want. That's what's crazy to me is that these people actually advocate. For this 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 monopoly and thinks that is that is necessary and I'm like why you know what I mean this 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 same uh, uh, entity has you know caused a lot more you know uh, human atrocities than what private entities have so my my logical conclusion and this is how I became you know uh, a person that wanted to abolish you know the, the state you know because I took it to the, to this logical conclusion I'm like damn you know this. This uh, entity has been used historically. I mean, it's the evidence is there. It's not up for debate. You know what I mean? Historically, to to do the, the, the I mean, create these uh, these famines and the genocides and, and all of this cr taking entire economies. Like, why in the hell would I want that to exist? I don't want that type of entity to be there. I, th I think it's a, it's a form of uh, intellectual laziness that people they don't want to bear the burden of having to, you know, analyze morality or analyze logically, uh, you know, different situations and why, you know, why an employer might choose this person over the other person, why an employer might pay this person more and pay that person less. <laughs> because most of the times, um, you know, uh, most businesses, I would say, uh, don't have the extra income to be racist. To be, it takes a lot yeah. of money to be racist. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> absolutely, it, as a business owner, it. I, I and I will not. say this as a business owner, it absolutely takes a. Ah, it costs a lot, <laughs> lot. I would lose, you know, more than a third of my okay. of okay. Of, of of my of of my clientele if I just decided to be a racist prick. Right. Right. I, I can't. My, my children <laughs> cannot afford me doing that. So you know what. Not for, I mean, I wasn't racist to begin with, but it's not for me, you know, because it would cost it would cost me at least that, and that's just, and and probably more because the outcry once that became public, other people would know, and then even clients of mine who I would take in because I had didn't have a problem with their race may find out and go, well, that's fucked up. I don't want to do business <laughs> with you anymore, and now I've cut my business maybe in two thirds, you know, by two thirds. So, but people don't think like that. It has to be it has to be this this you know it has to be this oppression from everywhere. Is there oppression? Damn right there is. Is there still racism? Unfortunately, damn right there is. You know, is there is 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 there some form of institutionalized or systemic within the system? I, you know, with the arguments I hear for that, I see there's a lot of credence to that, unfortunately, because Absolutely. the way it was built, you know, like when we we've talked we talk about all the time, like the minimum wage laws and all this stuff. Why were they created in the first place? To put Eugenics. down the black man, unfortunately. Damn, yeah, exactly. During the progressive era that everybody likes to talk about. Oh, progressive, progressive, progressive. Fucking original progressives were sick motherfuckers. <laughs> they were, man. You know, no, I mean, it, it's funny, but... It, and that's, eugenics is... And that's exactly yeah. what it is. It's, it's eugenics. It's, it's been historically... It, this wasn't... Uh, it hasn't just happened ha here. You know, they you did that in, uh, you know, uh, South, uh, South Africa as well. You know, yep. using this... This as a minimum wage as a tool to they were pricing black people and not just black people, you know, women. Yep. Uh, they were pricing, uh, key, uh, you know, young youngsters that wanted to work pr to price them out of of the market. You know what I mean? The people that were like with the Bacon Davis Act and, and the unions. And that's what that was their argument on the floor to get this law, this law passed. And again, this is what's so crazy to me is that all of this information with the Internet is out there. You can go look this stuff up. So uh, and it still works like that now, you know what I mean? Like these, uh, uh, fortunately, definitely in the South, uh, you know, I know Dave can, uh, you know, relate to this, you know, within the South and you see a lot of different uh, like mi minorities uh, 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 and they don't have that kind of uh, they don't have a skill set and, and whatnot. All minimum wage does is it gives them it's like, a, you know, the ladder's way up there and they can't they can't reach the ladder because they don't have the skill. I, they can't, I, yeah. It's illegal to employ them. 
Me and you could probably have a two-hour podcast on what's wrong with the South (laughs) and especially certain minority groups in the South and especially certain majority groups in the South. And I bet we could have a long, lengthy discussion. And, you know, I don't – I until this baby boomer generation – unfortunately wears off <laughs> wears and they're, off and they're until not, they die dave just say it until they die until they until they're <laughs> until they expire and they're no they're no longer you know and you no longer have these like 80 year old men as as state senators who uh you know probably still call uh black people negroes and stuff uh you're not gonna have anything at the top in, in these states down here changed and the way the states are set up in the south they just have the minority populations basically on their back, belly up, just rubbing them, keeping them asleep. And there's just nothing they can do to get out of this because the only chance for success in the South you have as a minority, unless you're born into a really good like upper-middle-class family, is a government job, and that's just the truth. And when that's gone in a few years, when the dollar collapses, whenever that happens and all those jobs are gone, it's going to be rough for these, these areas because there's not going to be food stamps coming in. <laughs> exactly, but that's to me is why it's uh you know I've been so aggressive because that collapse is inevitable. You know, what it I mean? is. It's, it's, they, they it's try, so scary. They could they could try to you know uh, uh, uh kind of keep that bubble up as long as, but it's got to pop and it's going it's going to pop. And uh you know my my thing is trying to get these guys you know and educating these guys and letting them know like you you gotta be you gotta you better get ready for that because it, it, it's coming. You know, so you gotta kind of start acting. Understanding that, all right, well, I'm an individual. I own myself. I can't be, uh, you know, falling back on, on the government because, again, they're, what they use to, uh, you know, put whether it be put food on the table through these uh, illegitimate methods such as uh, food stamps and, and, all, and all of this, all that's going to be stripped from you, then what? You know what I mean? Well, so and then best- the family, in the, 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 especially the black family uh, down in the South has just been destroyed. Oh, okay, you can say here and say this, but you know, if the collapse happens, and this is just me using my eyeballs, uh, white families are going to be I right in the nope. South. <laughs> black families who don't have their grandfather and their grandmother around, and their mother and their father around all the time, saying, "Hey, you know, hey, we own forty acres, and uh, you know, have two or three houses, and all this, <laughs> you know, we'll be I, right, you know, right? They don't have that. It's all welfare, and when that's gone, and you have no family to fall back on." You die out. Absolutely. So I'm, I, I'm with you, Eric, man. This is so big, and no one's pushing it. And I think Bitcoin's going to save a lot of people. I really oh, do. Yeah. Well, oh. crypt- cryptocurrencies, whatever it is, you know. Well, I, I would just say I think, I think the reason that most people don't pay attention to the oncoming collapse is because even if they're paying attention in the slightest – they're the common refrain that I hear from most people who reject the the notion that this is even a possibility in the very near future is, oh, the, you know, this the, it, 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 the basic it can't happen. The, you know, it won't happen here. This won't happen. Or they've been predicting this for they you know, people like Ron Paul and those crazy people. They've been predicting this for 40 something years at this point. It's when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? And. You know, and and that's the whole thing. You know, getting back to what you were talking before about you know the internet and the fact that it's it's you're able to research this stuff. Well, you could just go look these things up. You could just go study the history of any other country who went to hyperinflation and destroyed itself and ended you know, up having to like Zimbabwe. You know, is the is the most recent example, obviously. And then they, what did they end up doing? They ended up getting bought out by the IMF. I think that's how that the whole thing got settled. Uh, because they didn't have a choice they you know they were printing i mean i made a meme about it a week or so ago you know but with donald trump about you know they had a hundred trillion dollar <laughs> bill like that's what they did to try to do and people Make are just America like zimbabwe again yeah maybe. exactly that was, great, that was a great meme because but because people yeah but because people they don't they always say oh that was there and you know, America, America, the greatness of America. That can't happen here. And Rome will never they will, collapse, they will, they will, they won't will let it collapse. happen. Not in 2,000 years. But. You know, and like, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see the collapse in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't think they can string it out that much longer. There's a repeating pattern of empire collapse in human history. And every empire that invades Afghanistan or Persia, they go bye-bye. Yeah. And guess what America has been, where they've been the last 15 years. 
in is that like Persia, a curse? <laughs> it is a curse. Alexander the Great died there. The British Empire died there. The Soviet Union died there. And America's going to die there. Yeah. Because yeah. none of them could pull out. I guess every fucking pound of gold's in Afghanistan and no one knows it or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Now, they've been kicking this can uh, like down the road for, for a long time. And uh, my thing was, and I, I really, I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't, you know, it was, it was desperate times out there, um, you know, in the early, um, you know, 1900s. But, I mean, the Federal Reserve System being created kind of, I mean, you want to talk about uh, speeding up the process of, of, of this inevitable uh, collapse. I mean, they just made it, it was just, it's, it's rapid. Uh, they just sped it up uh, with the creation in, uh, of the Federal Reserve and how, you know, I think about it all the time, like how in the hell did they let, uh, you know, that, that these fools, convinced uh, the, the public that this was a, a, a legitimate, a, a good idea, you know what I mean, to, to have this sort of uh, entity that is uh, created in which you can monetize your debt and all, all like, I'm like, when, when, I, when I think about what the Federal Reserve System, uh, you know, what it is, and, and the reason, you know, the Federal Reserve, you know, act and, uh, you know, I put it on paper, I'm like, how this is the worst worst business model like how, how in the hell who, who would who would think that this is a good idea uh but again i i, I don't know fascist how it would it's very it's very it's, it's if, very, I, if it's, I was a it's, corporate it's very, fascist with the last name warbucks i'm pretty sure i would warbucks. really like the federal reserve it's, it's, it's very <laughs> it's very simple eric you just find stuff that you want to buy that other people have built or worked really hard to create and then you just write a check and say here's money <laughs> well, and, and then they ask, "Wait a minute, where'd you get that money? Just don't worry about it. Here's money." <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I just made. What, you can spend it right now. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm saying. Like it's like but, when I when you put it on paper, it's like, what the fuck? Why, why, why is this? Why? Is, that's a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. And but they let they let it happen. And, and what's and yeah, no, I was just gonna say what, what's funny is when people if people think that that's actually a good idea, you know, I like to say, well, if that really solves problems. You know, you should, like you said, look at Zimbabwe, look at Hungary, look at Weimar Republic, Germany, look at Argentina, look at Colombia, look at Venezuela. Look at Venezuela right now. They, they, right they, now. They, you can they, look they at Venezuela be, right they now. They must be the richest countries in the world <laughs> right and then, now. And then you look at the Federal Reserve. They <laughs> they basically funded the Bolshevik res Revolution. They funded the Mao Revolution, the Communist Revolution in China. Single-handedly, American banks did this, and so did they. They funded the Nazis. So... The Federal Reserve Act has that one scribble on a piece of paper has been the summation of so many lost lives. It can't be imagined. Absolutely. No, it, it's, it's scary. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's like, why government cannot exist. It has to go <laughs> away. Wow. One no, scribble on a line of paper and three, four hundred million man. people are dead. Man, man, the magic on those magic papers. And it, and it did it, again. It's just and it's, it's such a bad idea, no matter what way you look at it. But um, it, it is absolutely responsible for um again because the government's broke uh but again when you have that kind of uh entity in which you can you know print out money uh whenever the hell you you, you want and monetize your own debt which again that just that never makes sense every time i say that i'm like what do you mean monetize debt it, like uh that doesn't make sense but that's that's what it uh what it allows the uh the u.s uh government government to do so they can spin into to the oblivion you know because they can you know monetize it. that's what the federal that's exactly what the freaking entity was created uh for you know and it's very sad that a lot of people think uh that this is and it's crazy because you get guys and this is the danger in, in politics and politicians because you get guys like uh you know like bernie sanders he's probably the prime example of a guy that will kick it down the Kick the can You're down the road. Just not a fan of Bernie Sanders. No, I, I, I despise him. I'm not gonna sure. Lie you. You're sure you don't have a Bernie <laughs> sticker on your car? Oh no, 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 not at all. I feel, I feel like no, because he he really embodies everything. I'm gonna have to get Louis to put one on your car. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, but but that, but I mean, it's Bernie, uh, for example, and he, again, he highlights the dangers of politics, but he he goes out there and he'll he'll say every now and then uh, something that sounds uh, okay. And it's a good idea. Uh, well, like, oh, well, the Federal Reserve needs to be uh, audited, or we need to they 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 shouldn't be doing this. But then he'll go uh, a few months later, like he did what a uh, week ago, and he says uh, goes to Puerto Rico and says we got to use the Federal Reserve to pay off all your uh, uh, all your public debt. 
And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like you would, you would just yeah. say like, well, this, this is the danger of politics. Well, sure, yeah, because think, that's, oh, I was just because because that's a blatant yeah. contradiction that goes over so many people's head. It, the same it, with Bur using Bernie as the example. The same exact thing goes on with his record, as as much as that's actually worth with uh with war and stuff like that. When everybody goes, Bernie's anti-war. Bernie's anti-war. When you bring up. Well, no, he voted to fund every single action, every one since he's been the, there. Look at the what are you talking about? Well, he's he was against the war. He funded it. It doesn't <laughs> matter if he tells you he's against it. It doesn't matter he, if he tells you he's going to try to personally attach himself to soldiers' legs and keep them from going. He's still helping fund the fucking thing, you goddamn morons. <laughs> no, that's exactly what he's doing. I mean, and it's not up for debate, but th this is, again, it's like this, the demagoguery and the how people cling to these politicians so much. Um, it, 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 it's sad. It's it's very, uh, you know, when I it's very sad. I mean, that's really the only way that I can describe how you can look at this guy's record and you see the year votes. Um, and you know of him vote. I mean, it's not like he did it once or twice. I mean, he did it. It's because they want to believe, single. Eric. Yeah, exactly. That's but that want to believe in the government. It, it's, no, it's because they want to believe. <laughs> well, you yeah. want to oh, believe. Oh. They don't want to think about reality. Yeah, <laughs> fuck reality. Reality is scary. Reality is scary, I man. I want to ignore reality. Bernie's gonna fix my problems. Trump's gonna fix my problems. <laughs> I, you know, and that's the end of the story. I believe in him. He's gonna fix it all. That's the, that's the sad, uh, you know, uh, funny, the, the sad state, but it's the sad way. Why do you think uh, superhero movies are so big right now? Yeah, they want to believe. They know <laughs> it, 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 it. This whole deal is, uh, you know, we've we've talked about. And I've, I've made video after video about, you know, uh, government itself is nothing more than this, you know, idea that is believed upon by the majority of individuals within this this given region, and you know, they treat these politicians like. Like like profits and uh, you know and it's it's sad. Um, even though you can, I mean, you could put. That's my frustration with Bernie. I might I might despise despise him, but I despise probably is his fanatics more than uh, more than anything because you could put the facts. I mean, lay them out there, lay them out there. I mean, they, you can't refute them. Um, it's it's not up for debate, and they would do mental gymnastic after mental. Well, if we gymnastic. don't vote for him, Trump's gonna win. Yeah, like oh, and that's 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 what I always hear every time I criticize them. Or well, you must be a Trump supporter. What the fuck? No, that is no. I don't want any of them I want of them to win unless you're gonna get in there and say, all right, I hereby declare the president, uh, the, the Federal Reserve, I mean the federal government abolished. All right, cool. You know that that that's maybe a president that I would support, so to speak. But I mean, like this, this no, I don't. Just because I'm criticizing one does not mean I, I, rem I remember when all I remember when Auburn played Oregon a few years back for the national championship, and I was like, "Can a plane just hit the <laughs> stadium and end this thing so no one wins?" Because I, <laughs> you right. know, I hate Auburn because I'm uh, you know down here yeah. in Alabama. So. Absolutely, absolutely. No, but it, it, it's sad, man, and I really don't. Uh, you know, and going back to the what we were talking about earlier, I think that's why it's so important. To uh, get guys to uh, understand this and you know plant those plant those seeds and get them to understand uh, you know what it is that government actually is because I don't know if you guys uh, saw I recently had a debate with a um, you know a guy that insisted that taxation was not there yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, that was that was the, the the debate and I simply asked him because you know it was an Oxford style debate so um, I got the ask to ask him. Oh, uh, you know, a question. And my first question was, what was government? And he literally could not. I mean, it's, it's almost embarrassing. It's on the Liberty Hangout. Uh, uh, you can go look at the, at, at the actual. It was embarrassing. He sat, he was sitting there back like, what is government? Uh, <laughs> right. what, what is government? Like, he couldn't answer it. But most people can't fucking answer that. Well, Eric, that look, question. look. At, I know you're uh, religious, but you know I'm kind of in the agnostic thing. It's you know what is God? Everyone's definition of God is 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 yeah, independent. Absolutely. It's different, and regardless when they're in church or not, or whoever's driving the 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 the, the ideology under the head, w the way you view God is totally you, okay? Right. And the way you view government is totally holy to yourself. You know, Danilo says it all the time. He's he's got communists in his family from communist country. And they think communism fine, but you look at it, they all had government jobs. Right. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So that's and fine and dandy. Perspective, you know? is, <laughs> perspective is always important. <laughs> it helps. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, no. 
Go ahead. They, had, go ahead. They, they, they had no gypsies in the in the family lineage. Yeah. <laughs> to speak of uh, in those countries, so they didn't. <laughs> they didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> right, right. But but I did I did cast that debate, um, uh, Eric. And one thing that I really liked the way you did it is you you emphasized how important it is to state clearly definitions of basic terms because that's one thing that when I talk to people I try to clarify is before we talk about anything in detail about this specific legislation this president what this senator what he did you know this specific thing get the basics down what is capitalism what is taxation what is theft <laughs> right no absolutely you have you have to do that you have to do that and that was my first thing that's good uh, you know in the debate was i laid down the terms you know what's government what's taxation right. what, what what is theft you know right. what i mean because i uh, i feel like uh, and again like people are it's almost like you're arguing and you can uh and that's what i didn't want him to be able to do was try to kind of alter to kind of change definitions mid mid conversation you know what I mean? So I'm oh, putting yeah. them out there, like, cause that's what that's what people do. You know what I mean? They make it mean, like, oh, well, right here when I'm making this point, I'm gonna say what you know, capitalism is this. But when I go make this point, I'm gonna say that it that it's that. So uh, they they're at the immediate advantage. Well, it's all racist, make it, and you know, Eric. <laughs> All, all of it's just racist. Anyway. It's, all, it's all facts are racist. Facts, you know? logic, <laughs> math, all of it's racist. All of it's racist. Anything you can prove without a doubt is is absolutely racist. Reality Whoa. is racist, Eric. <laughs> Reality is racist. I'll buy. I'll buy that for a dollar. Um, but that's that's the reason. Like I said, you know, that goes back to what I was saying before about the fact that they don't know how to argue at all. They don't know how to debate, and that's exactly it. Because the number one rule of debate: start with your definitions, define your terms. If you can't, if you can't come to an agreement on the definition of the terms that are going to be used in the debate you're about to have, then there's no point in having the debate because it's never going to go anywhere. One person might as well be speaking Spanish and the other one speaking French. Well, Literally. exactly. You're not you, it, exactly. You're not speaking the same language at that at that point, and you're never going to get anywhere. And I think a lot, at least the people I run into, a lot of them don't want to deal with the definitions, maybe for the reason you said that they want to be able to use them as needed and, and where needed and, and, and however they want to. That's because, exactly. But they don't want to, you know, most people don't want to answer the type of questions that people like at least myself will ask them. They get very defensive right away and they, they just automatically, you know, or they fall back on the false dichotomy like you said before. I mean, I ran into that the other day in a, in a secessionist group which is actually something I wanted to ask you about on a, a slightly different topic, but I ran, into, I ran into it where I was invited there by a friend of mine who used to be a part of it and is now an anarchist. Oh, you're talking about the, the, uh, the, the state of Jefferson group? Yes. Oh. And, now, and, and now we're going to try to help some more of them become anarchists. And I posted one of my memes in there, and immediately this guy said something about, oh, no, it was, it was a meme about secession. It was a meme I made a long time ago that I redid that was essentially just the, you know, a woman sitting in the, you know, in the middle of a crowd by herself. And it just talks about how secession is not just about a go you, know, you seceding as a group to form your own little, little government. No, individual secession. That's something I preach all the time. Just vacate mm -hmm. the state, man. Just mm -hmm. on your own if you have to. Just, just mm -hmm. secede by yourself. And I said this, and his immediate reaction was, well, yeah, that's what I want, but Trump's going to help me get there quicker. So I'm like... <laughs> you've totally and then when i said as soon as i said you okay wait a minute you you you're here because you want to be free but you're gonna go vote for the admitted fascist admit it now admit it's not like like oh, no, yeah he is called he is referred to crony capitalism and how he is proud he has used it over and over and over again throughout his his life so i'm he, sorry yeah, he is a fascist he has not used the word fascist he's a fascist but as soon as i said that the very first thing now mind you I'm in a secessionist group. I've already I've already announced myself as an anarchist. His first reaction: Oh man, another Hillary supporter. <laughs> Dude, are you retarded? Like seriously, that's the only definite. That's the only explanation. I and I don't mean to be you know mean to I don't mean to be a little retarded people. But that's the only explanation I can think of because, like, how? What? No. <laughs> And then when that would I made the opposite of a Hillary person. Yeah, sorry. when when I pointed out that I wanted nobody, he immediately first he told me that we had to agree to disagree. I'm like, no, no, that's a, no, I I don't accept that cop out because not all opinions are valid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tell I you know I tell you you know it, 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 no no not all opinions is that are valid. What liberals do is they just try to is they try to get the law to force their opinions as valid. That's what it seems to me. 
Mm-hmm. Well, they both no, no, no. It's not just the liberals; they both do. Oh well, yeah, no, I mean, of all state is due to every, every do, state yeah, is they, they do it. They do it. I, I, I argue that I think the regressive left. I mean, I, the regressive the left. I, that, I love yeah, that. I call them regressive left. I love the that. Why, why I say that they're they're uh, if I if I have to if I absolutely have to decide like all right, which I guess group or or, or people or political ideology uh, is the most dangerous to to my cause. I would have to say the regressive left because not only are they doing what obviously most of all statists do, um, in, in which they you know they want to you know pass a law and they want to force people to to uh, uh, obey by whatever whimsical I- ideals that they that they have, they want to silence the people and they're open. They're not even they're open about this. They want to silence the people that are on the opposite opposite end. So not only you know that that so not only do you want to you know, pass this law to, you know, have uh, armed gangsters, uh, you know, put, put guns to my head and, you know, threaten me to lock me up in a cage if I don't if I don't pay into it. If I speak out against it, you know, you, you want me you want me silenced, which is why you see all the um, like when we talk about, you know, in comparison to the to the I guess to the right uh, and to the left, you mostly see when you see these like there's this silly uh, rioting and uh, people are going so uh, like pro- uh, protesting against uh, another candidate. It's usually coming from those guys, uh, you know, from from the left. They can't even imagine. You know, we saw like uh, Milo was at DePaul, uh, you know, and he's oh, getting that the was insane. They, you know, I just that, saw that like, today. That, that, well, the that, cops that, just sit there and did nothing. It was so yeah. ridiculous. It, it was the whole situation. Was, the whole was, group of students was yelling at the cops, "Do your job." <laughs> do your job. <laughs> You know that was that was uh, amazing, but but it's like I'm looking at situations like this, and I'm like these guys are are are, are and they have the nerve because you hear usually when people you know they I guess a certain group calls another group fascist, you usually hear those guys are the ones that are, oh Donald Trump's a fascist. I'm like what the hell do you call what you're what you're doing you know uh, uh, right now and what you want to pretty much silence everybody that really uh, you know dis- disagrees with you. You don't even want to hear an opposing. Uh, uh, view, you know what I mean, and that to me is just fucking. That's just dangerous, man. It's absolutely. That's dangerous. what the useful idiots used for, man. <laughs> They're used to push an agenda they don't they don't understand. <clears throat> you know, especially commies, especially the totalitarian wing of, of of statism. They 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 have blind followers, man. Authoritarians they always believe in someone, some figurehead. Totalitarians they believe in an idea and forcing everyone into believing that idea and living by their ideas. And you just can't control people like that. And that's what's scary about the left and the progressives and everybody. They want everyone to live exactly how they think they should live. And it's uh, you can yeah. see that through communism. They, they control how people live. Absolutely. No, and, 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 it's so, and it's so dangerous. You know, I was uh, in the same idea kind of in, a, in this uh, silly uh, debate group. And uh, most of those guys are, are left, left status. Uh, you get a couple. There's actually like maybe a few anarchists. Uh, excuse me, in there, but most of them are left leaning status. And uh, I put a poll, and you know, you can put polls in the group. And I put a poll in there, you know, and I said, uh, Do you support taxation? No or yes, because I support slavery, you know what I mean? And uh, because that's again what, what you're, I mean, just to see all of the, the mental gymnastics and people saying that uh, uh, taxation is a, is, is a social responsibility. Like, how can you, 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 you're basically saying that you own another individual. If you are saying that they're responsible for, uh, putting in a, a pot, they may not even want to, uh, put in. You are basically saying, no, the community, or I mean, no, that's, I don't even want to call it a community because usually there's, there has to be a, a group of bureaucrats and a group of like, uh, I guess rulers, uh, that actually, they're the ones. I mean, so these people like to think that their that their taxation is going to these, uh, you know, to the community. But no, it's not going to the community. It's going to the people that rule over the, your community. Um, but uh, you know, to hear these people say these things, you know, like it, it, this is a a, a response, a, a social responsibility. And I'm like, do you not? That's a. I don't see how. Any more blatant that is uh, of uh, avocation for slavery. You're, That's you're, a cult. That is a cult. It's sad. It's sad and, and it's scary that these people, and it's funny, it was a Georgia senator uh, as well who claims that. Uh, <laughs> claims you have that to rent, pay your debt to society. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, 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 you know, you got to pay your debt. He was saying that rent, uh, wait, well, he, he said there's a difference between, I guess, contractual rent and economic rent is what he, what he call it. 
uh, basically saying that, uh, you know, you have to, if you have a property and, you know, that community, uh, you know, has that, that community booming, obviously it's a community full of individuals, but uh, that, you know, they did a lot of, uh, you know, obviously putting a bunch of labor, human capital, uh, voluntary exchanges and growing that community. So the value of, uh, I guess, getting a house of some sort in that community, if you raise the price to sell it, that is somehow theft. You know what I mean? It's sad because you owe, you owe, you owe the community. Uh, and I'm like, oh, so, and, and when you hear people yeah. make these asinine type of arguments, he's saying that the earth, uh, I guess, well, his whole argument was that oh. the land, nobody can uh, own the land and the land was here. First, and I'm like, you don't a, understand how stupid. But but the government sounds. owns. But the government owns the land. It's so are they, so are, are, they, are they nobody? That, that, like what? That's the exactly government. what I said. Because he's a statist. So I was like, <laughs> by your own logic, if nobody can own the land, how can you advocate for statism? Because that's exactly what it is. It's a it's a, a region, and a bunch of people are ruling over land. How the hell can you rule over something that you don't own? Because it's the common, the common because, ownership. Well, because that's different. <laughs> well, because you know, logical consistency is not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah, he might. Yeah, and the and commies if, always if, only if, think Eric, about no, it. Eric, Eric, keep, keep your logic, logic and your reason to yourself. All right. <laughs> It's so close-minded. They only look at it on Earth. Well, you know, lo logic is is a, is a racist white man conspiracy. So, oh, absolutely. <laughs> have you heard that one yet? Have you heard that? Oh, one? No, I, I, I've, I've, I've I've had that one thrown at me multiple times. I've had a little bit. I don't. I no. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I don't deal with your logic. Lo logic is a racist white man conspiracy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Some some lady. <laughs> what? I, I've had it. I've had it happen multiple times. Oh my god! And I was like, "What? <laughs> With the words that just came out of your mouth? What?" I <laughs> see your wrong? mouth moving, but all I hear is Charlie Brown's teacher. But, but, I but don't you know don't understand how how insulting. <laughs> this is why you know how again I, I I turn that mirror on a lot of these definitely these black folks who make these make arguments like that, and I'm like, because they say like libertarianism, this is this uh, kind of white man uh, ideology, and I'm like, so you're basically saying that to be be. Because again, libertarian. If we're talking about libertarianism. I mean, to to its fullest extent, you're going to be an anarchist. But uh, you know, you're putting it to it to its fullest extent. So you're basically saying that being free is is, is for white folks. So you're you're saying. I think that's to me. Is that's, that's why I'm like. I they literally like, are saying that. I, yeah, you don't want to be free, Eric. I mean, What's wrong with you? You don't want to be free. I, that's insulting. You're saying that basically to be 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 black is to be a slave. That's gotta be. <laughs> that's our hot topic. You, the, the the episode has to be named "Not Being a Slave Is for White People." <laughs> no, but that, that's, that's going to get us a million hits, bud. That, that's the type. That's the type Mom. of arguments that these guys that these guys make. So again, like again, we're, we're going to be. Uh, logically consistent, you're basically saying that, okay, people that are, aren't white, you know, such as black people like the guys that are usually making this argument, you're saying that to be free, you know, it's just not, so, I mean, to be you either free or you're slave, you know, so, uh, you know, it, I guess you're saying that slavery is is for, for black folks, and I reject that notion any day of the week, so <laughs> I, I need to be the one calling you the racist, you know, when you, yeah, say, right. that, when you say that uh, libertarianism and, uh, you know, the type of a uh, free thinking uh, that we that we do in capitalism. If this is for white folks, then uh, you know I, I need to be calling you 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 the racist because you're saying that well to be black and to be brown and to be another some other type of uh, you know racial <laughs> racial minority uh, to be free is just that's just not what, what we do. You know you got to be a slave. In the in the words of uh, Bob Murphy from the recent uh, Contra Krugman, uh, that kind of argument would be solved by a, a course in college. I think it's. Starts with E and ends in uh, nomics. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it should be Absolutely. mandatory. The first class you you take when you walk into college is 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 economics one hundred and one. No, because I mean, when you think about it, though, I um, mean, that is a it's a great point. I'm glad that we mentioned that because again, economics was what you know turned me. To, you know, being an ANCAP turned me to being uh you know uh, a a libertarian, and um, it, it, I have to have to mention that because. You know, when we talk about guys that are on our side, uh, you know, whether it be the, uh, you know, whatever that we want to call ourselves, ANCAPs, volunteers, you know, anarchists, the guys on our, I guess the right, the right anarchists is what they would, uh, what they call us. You never really hear about guys becoming, uh, I guess, one of us and then uh, reading a, a, a Marx book or something and then becoming an ant. Uh, well, an, well, an, well, there, there is one. There is there's a couple. No, there's a couple. No, there's the one. He's he's Neo. He's the one asshole. His name is <laughs> his name is Austin Wade Peterson. <laughs> 
But but oh, man, I really hope he does. I hope this isn't in my trial when he when the universe flips on his head and he gets elected and I'm getting court martialed for something. He didn't. Go, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't go ancom. He just went back to a pussy little statist. Yeah, that's the, basically just an a communist. No, a communist. He's not an ANCOM. Yeah, yeah, I have more respect. We, we, I have more respect him. for an ANCOM than I do for him. <laughs> we, we, we gotta, we, we gotta get him on the show. No. <laughs> but you never, you never really hear about guys, uh, you know, being I, I guess a, what we they call us a right anarchist. But you never hear a guy <laughs> judging upon a tallo. I just don't get. No, it. it's no. You're right. It's rare. It, it is rare yeah, that that conversion it's, it's happens. Rare. And that the conversion is rare because we become we use logic. Which my dog quit barking in the background, but we we use logic to uh to get to where we at, and you know uh, when we approach economics from a uh, from a logic uh, standpoint, we become uh become this. So their guy, those guys are usually purely emotional, um, you, and it. you never really you never really hear about that. And this is why I'm like I when people uh, think that I'm some type of you know asshole. <laughs> when I think that uh, you know being a, being an ANCAP is, I, I, I think of it as almost superior. Um, I, I don't think I'm being an asshole at all because I, I think about you know the type of people that come this way. It's all about logic. It's all about facts and, and consistency. The truth. You know, yeah, and, and the truth that usually uh, tend to align where where we align. But the guys over there on the ANCAP, they 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 might have been some type of. Uh, status of some sort, and they read, uh, 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 I don't know, Marx, or, I don't know what they, Chomsky, I don't know. They read something <laughs> silly that came from, from those guys, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't from Their gender a studies professor told them. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> but it's something that, that's more, more e emotional, but you usually hear the conversions coming from guys, again, like guys like myself, who grew up cultural Marxists, uh, you know, we become, you know, we, the, 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 when we get more knowledgeable, we become uh, you know where we're at. You know, I guess the right anarchist, so to speak. You rarely hear about guys that are uh, and, and caps and go full blown and, and come on. Damn, I read it. I read uh, this Marx book and and man, I I, I, I it, it uh, enlightened me. You know? <laughs> this this ten planks of communism, it just clicked. <laughs> it, 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 well, just, man, I, and now, man, it does it does seem to be a, a, well, a we, <laughs> almost natural transition though, because the same thing goes on in the status paradigm. It's a generalization, but on the whole, there's a reason that the the, the joke is, you know, if you're if you're under th if you're what is it if you're under thirty and uh, and you have no heart. They say if you're, if you're yeah. under thirty and, and you uh, and and you're, not, you're not uh, oh, you're not a Democrat, you have no heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if, if you if you're not a Democrat, you have no heart. And if you're over thirty and you're and you're oh, and you are and you're not a conservative, you have no brain. Um, yeah. But there, the, the trend does tend to you know I'm I, I'm a, I'm a perfect example of that. I took that I took the slow as route to anarchism because I spent the first you know from 18 to 28 almost I was a very liberal progressive um useful idiot and then I got then I bought a house and started a business and I quickly realized that government sucked largely so I automatically, by default, because going back to what we were talking about with that false dichotomy that everybody falls into, where they just if you think if they if you think if they think you're against one, you have to be for the other. That well, okay, that I guess that makes me a Republican or a more conservative. But then I continue to progress, and then eventually I found the Libertarian Party, and that was only I ended up in the Libertarian Party only to help the people in the Libertarian Party because I really just by the time I got to the Libertarian Party. I was almost uh, I was almost calling myself like openly an anarchist or a voluntarist because I had met I had met a, a, a guy who was in the Libertarian Party but had already it had already given up and be, decided he was an anarchist but he was just hanging out to try to help the guys out anyway and uh, he brought me in and it was like yeah that was short lived I ran by the time even when I ran for office I was pretty much an anarchist and I just didn't really I was giving it one last shot to try to help them out um, but that you know I and then finally I figured it out. But so, like I said, the trend just seems to go that way either, you know, either way. If, if And I guess people because it is possible for people to come directly for, from the left to anarchism and they usually end up as ANCOMs or ANSOC or whatever they want or social or, or what do they call themselves? Uh, libertarian socialists or whatever, um, <laughs> you know, it's so I, I don't know. It, it, it I'm, I'm not saying there is a definite causation or you know definite progression there but it does seem to work that way i don't know like yeah. it's kind of I mean, that's kind of hard to refute they're, they're, I mean, again you know it is hard to refute because <laughs> if you you know converse with uh 
these people, you know, on either side, you can just ask them. And uh, I, again, you really, you rarely see um, people that make that progression from being an and captain. All right, well, I'm just going to go and, and, and com or something like. You rarely hear that kind of that kind of progression uh, actually happening. That's because we come here, uh, we start thinking. It's always uh, thinking. You know, I, I didn't necessarily. I never really became a uh, you know a Republican or anything like that. I was a Democrat, and it, thankfully, I, I was reading. Guys like Soul and uh, Thomas Soul and uh, Walter Williams, you know what I mean. So I was reading that. It, it it didn't take long at all for me to reject, like say, all right, damn this 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 the government sucks and in pretty much every aspect. <laughs> there, I, I believe there's truth seekers out there, Eric, and I think people like us, these truth seekers, when they hold a position, they want to make damn sure that it's right. And you know, with me, I you know grew up. You know, even when I was young, I was like, "Hey, I'm you know I'm I'm a right winger." You know, like I love you know I grew up in Alabama. You know, in the suburbs or you know out in the out in the boonies, and you know that's this how you grow up. Uh, you know, all that ideology is kind of put in your head, and uh, you know, and and it's, you just find inconsistencies as you get older, and you go, "Well, what's the answer to this?" and you know, I just had never heard of voluntarism or anarchism, or I had heard of libertarianism, but I'd never really read into it. And you know, and then I read into it, and I was like, "Well, this shit's on all my other previously held." That's exactly like, how I Because I because I can't refute any of it. It's like I read Anatomy of the State halfway through it. I'm like, "Well, there's oh, nothing he said so far that I can break or you, say." You don't even <laughs> have to get one soon. An Anatomy of State. I mean, as soon as Rob Barr when he explains what the state. I, I believe the first one uh, was what what the state is not. What the yep. state I think, is not. Yeah, like when you get after there, you're like, all right, damn. Like, like I always say, everybody's like, what should I tell people to read? What should I? You that's know, my book. I, I, I was, say, Anatomy of the State is the red pill all day long. Just as it just, it's it's funny that you guys mentioned that because just as a refresher today, because I do it every once in a while. As I was getting ready before the show, I had the audio version of that nice. somebody reading it nice. playing and then i would just listen to it and it's still every time i, I nod my head and i'm like yep yep this is where i this is where <laughs> it, I recognize it, does, it. it doesn't take long nope. and, that, and that's the book i refer it has to no it. conclusion like hey how's here's how we fix it it's just like hey here's what the state is yeah you what figure it is out not. yeah exactly yeah. Here's you what can it make, is. Here's you can make the decision you can make the decision yourself you know what i mean and that was uh you know basic economics was one of those books as well for me by uh by Thomas Sowell because, you know, he opens up and uh, explaining what econ is and, and why, you know, it has to basically finding alternative uses for for resources and how these resources don't mean anything if uh, humans don't have the kind of human the, the human capital uh, to, to figure out uh, how to use it for his, his own benefit. You know what I mean? So he's, he's explaining how voluntarily exchanging things is just the natural kind of uh, uh, current people would like to think that it, it's the opposite like people just want to go around mugging people like that's but you know you know soul argues this walter argues this uh you know rock that's bar expensive. argues this you know that yeah exactly like all right if i put if i put two people uh in a i guess a, a given area with a bunch of uh land and resources say one person knows how to uh has mastered, has spent his time and, and his labor mastering how to use a resource to do one thing. The other person figures it out how to do another. What benefit are they are they having by killing the other? Because he doesn't know how to. The other person is the one that knows how to use that resource and mixes labor with that resource to uh, use it to his own benefit. So if I don't voluntarily exchange, say, all right, well, wait a minute. You know, if I I, I figured out how to how to do this. Let's exchange our products, and we're going to boost, boost both of our standards of, of living. That is the that is man at his natural state. If it wasn't, then we would not exist. Man, the first generation of man would have been wiped out. You know what I mean? So, again, a voluntary exchange is the natural state. But the other guys, uh, definitely the status, will want you to believe that somehow, you know, this kind of uh, the, 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 nat the more natural state is going around and they're just, just mugging everybody and still and still and killing people. Um, and man, it's chaotic. And again, we talk about logical consistency. I, I actually run with that argument. I say, well, if man is like that in his natural natural state, why in the hell would you want a government to exist? That doesn't make any. <laughs> well, exactly. Sense. Why would you? Why would you want these ruthless, vicious bastards to be ru ruling over you? Are you insane? 
Well, he's our ruthless, vicious bastard. <laughs> he's, well, a ni- I mean, he's, he's a nicer. And that's all statism is, is fear. It's based in fear. Hey, my guy will fuck everyone else up and keep me safe. That's what it is. It's like the basic form of tribalism. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, it, and it's fear. Fear is the uh, the great way to put it. You know, that's how I always say, and that's why I always tell them it's not an argument because, you know, they they like to say that, all right, well, man will do this without without a state. And I'm like, that doesn't mean that you aren't advocating. Your fear is not an argument, and that does not mean yeah. that you, you are – you are not advocating, uh, you know, for 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 slavery and enslaving your your fellow your fellow man. Because you know, when we talk about voluntarism, and people want to make it seem like we're the crazy ones, we're the bat bat crap crazy uh, people. And I'm like, no, you're the one that's advocating. Like, I don't advocate, you know, and I know nobody here with voluntarism. We don't advocate for voluntarism. Eric, Eric, st- stop forcing your your voluntarism onto me, okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, no, like we, we're right. not the ones advocating for that. That's not us. We don't we don't advocate for people to go around. Out your words, dirty well, <laughs> well, that goes that goes back to what you were saying before about the whole thing with the uh, with anat- you know with anatomy of the state and just the uh, the whole you know just Austrian economics in general, which people what people don't understand is it's not. Because they well, you don't have, they don't have answers. Well, of course not, because it's not descriptive. It's prescriptive. It's it's just telling you you know it's just saying hey this is what it is. You know, or no, it's the other way around. Yeah. It's not, it's, yeah, not, it's, it's not, I, mean, I said that in reverse. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's, it's, yeah. it's not prescriptive. It's descriptive. It's just telling you how it is and what you know, me. And, and, and then you make your conclusions and like, you know, like you, I think that was so great what you said, Eric, about the, 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 you know, the relationship with just the, you know, the two guys, like, I know I've heard that before, but it's been a while, you know, how else? The, yeah, kill the guy. Okay, now what? Now you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. now, now you don't have it. Now you now you now you have to spend your time, yeah. energy, and 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 resources to figure out how to do the other thing. In the meantime, the thing you knew how to do before is suffering, and you may need that more. Um, so, and what's funny is most people when they criticize um, you know libertarianism or voluntarism, they say no man is an island. No man can survive by himself. Of course, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm not saying like be self-sufficient, go live in the woods, get your solar panels, grow your own food, you know, knit your own clothes, build your own house. I'm not saying that. And don't talk to anybody ever. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that, isn't that what they always Ooh. tell us? They think that's an argument. If you don't like government? Go live off grid. You know, for one, I mean, the government still it's is not gonna, an argument. Don't try to. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a damn argument. It's that, illegal that, most of the place. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. That's illegal. I mean, if I don't have a fishing license and and all of that, the state's gonna come get me. You know what I mean? Either way, way it goes. You know, but it, but again, it, it, it's it, it's we have to talk about you know what the state you know is and what it, it it's not. And uh, when I try to describe that, and these people say that all right well man is naturally going to do these bad and immoral things and i always tell them you know me as a, a libertarian and me as a voluntarist and that that is not me you know i'm not the one advocating for that but you as a statist are absolutely advocating for the chaos because i mean who who better than to create this chaos than the state i mean the his, isn't the his, history and the evidence there and we're, and we're doing know? it to ourselves because like in the end Belief in government is just a, a mass hypnosis. It's yeah. just it like government is the geographical monopoly on force, and authority is a superstition, yep. a belief, and that's it. And authority is what backs the government. So if you don't believe that the government has authority, the government doesn't exist. So yep. it's yep. that simple. It's just men and women with guns forcing you to yep. pay them. Yeah, yep, exactly. exactly. And it, 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 I mean, that it's so fundamental. It's so fundamental. And I, I don't like letting people, you know, get away with those kinds of silly and lazy, lazy arguments. And I think what I've done and I, that's what I try to, you know, I'm always learning about the enemy. And that's the I think the one positive thing about me growing up this cultural Marxist is that I know all of their defaults. You know, when they try to argue, man, I've been there, done that. Hell, I, I was I used to preach it at one part when I was young, dumb and stupid. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you hadn't read and, and and ventured out into the way you did, you most likely would have been in one of these Black Lives Matter movements. Absolutely, it, w- it wasn't it'd be it wouldn't be up for debate because a lot of that <laughs> those kind of movements like Black Lives Matter was really happening. I would say it was more probably like what was that two that was that two thousand seven when the whole Gina Six thing happened in uh, Louisiana with those six black kids. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember going out, going out there. Um, it was like 2007. I was marching. You know, we went out to Louisiana marching. And I'm not saying that that cause uh, was uh, was unjust or anything like that. But I was already as a youngster. You know what I mean? Doing doing that kind of stuff. And I, this is why I always 
credit guys like uh, you know Thomas Sowell. People talk about who who can I point to, and I talk about you know Thomas Thomas Sowell. It's like if I mean I was I remember first finding out about him, and I was like, how in the hell am I just not finding out this guy is exist? Because what he's been saying about things like minimum wage and state statism being used uh, to endorse this racism, he had been saying this for thirty years. Like he had yep. been saying this. A long time ago. It's out was, there if you want to see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he, it was, I was like, man, this is a guy. I mean, he would be. He was young. You know, he had his glasses and his afro. Like he was saying all, all this <laughs> stuff that that we were that we're talking about now. That that he he had called all of that. He was like, look, the, the minimum wage is going to do this. It is a it is all is an anti is a most blatant anti Negro call. Well, Friedman called it an anti Negro law back then, and hmm. it's funny how, how how it has worked. That and these guys were calling this. So it was on the floor, you know, of the Congress. I remember him. He was arguing with Biden uh, when he was. Uh, uh, I can't remember if he was in the House or the Senate. Basically explaining how all of these uh, government disparities that they throw out there, and they say, well. Uh, uh, black people only represent this, um, this, this, and uh, so it was like all of your, all of these, these government research, uh, you know, folks are all garbage. All of this is garbage. He was on the floor saying, I mean, this is 30 years ago. He was saying this, this type of stuff, and all of it's come to, uh, come to light. And, and you know, it's funny to see guys like this that have been warning us and saying, man, this is a bad idea. How, how do you keep a voting, voting block voting for you, though, Eric? True. Absolutely, you have to you have to keep keep kicking a can down down the uh, you know the road, and you have to keep kind of uh, putting that lie out you, there. You, you definitely to, don't like pay Thomas Soul to go around all your liberal no, colleges. Yeah. And speeches. Well, no, and no, he was. You don't do that. People like people like Thomas Soul, people like Walter Williams, are discredited to a certain extent on the left. Their ascent, even if even if people don't use the words anymore. At least the perception I've gotten is a lot of people kind of view them, as, at least the you know black, at least you know black people kind of view them as, you know this this this, this version of uh, Uncle Tom. No, that's exactly you no, know it's not, you don't even have to sugarcoat that one. That's exactly what it is. You know, Clarence yeah. Thomas. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they, well, they, they, yeah. Oh, yeah. We we don't we don't have to listen to them. They don't really know what they're doing. Bullshit. The guy, the, he's just speaking again. He, he's been like you said, he's been saying it forever. Walter Williams has been at this for a very long time. But there's a lot of people of all races who have yeah, been at this been doing a very it's long, been time. Yeah, for a long I, I hate, time. I hate how people always want an appeal to authority until that doesn't work, and then or or, or, or they well, don't they ever want the that appeal to authority. That appeal to authority. They don't want you to ever call them on it. You know they want to pull. They want to call you on it. Yeah. Oh, you, you're not. You're not black. You couldn't ever ever understand. That's an appeal to authority. So when yeah. a black guy says, "Well, this is what's fucked up, and here's why," who do you run to? You've already put all your beans in this uh, uh, appeal to authority basket. So you have to go to name calling because you have no fucking argument. Yep, that's exactly what. It, and it's funny because uh, you know, and, and they reject guys like uh, Saul and Williams. And all of, most of these guys, no, both of them had largely grew up in the same exact situations. Grew up in poverty, uh, you know. Uh, some of the like uh, he admits, so all admits that he was a he was a Marxist uh, yep. growing up, and he had uh, he had read, you know, Marx going over. He thought it made sense when he was he was young. It wasn't until he got to like the University of Chicago and he was taking uh, economics uh, classes, uh, man. He was like, what the, you know, this doesn't even make. Makes sense, but he had grew up in those same life. This is why what trips me out when I hear people usually default. You know, this is this is uh, he's an uncle, so he don't know what it's like. I'm like, bro, like I don't been I don't been in and out of jail. I grew up gang banging. You know, I did all this stuff. I don't did more than the people that that are usually arguing against me. These are people that I. I it's funny that guys that are from my like you know hometown and whatnot, uh, or home I guess city. So uh, they grew up like and comfortable in, in, in like, a, you know, a upper middle class family, even though they were African uh, American, grew up in these, these, uh, you know, high, higher income uh, deals. And they're trying to tell me now in 2016, they're still comfortable trying to tell me, I don't know what the hell. And I'm like, you had it better, way better off than I did going to, I grew up and I had the, the same old story, single parent household, father wasn't there, mama trying to work two, three jobs just to keep down, you know, food on the table. Um, uh, but again, and going back to that point, uh, you know, we talk about how people grow up and how you get here. I am thankful that my mother, you know, she was a 
Clark or Democrat growing up. She was also was one of those guys that she refused to take welfare. That's why she got those types of jobs. You know, she was that uh, consistently kind of like independent to where she was like, I, I'd be damned if I'm going to go out there and, you know, apply for welfare um, and things are like that. And I kind of took that kind of independence. And obviously, again, it's all about taking things to the logical conclusion. I like, uh, I re- believe we were talking with uh, Liberty Hangout before, Dave, and you kind of, the analogy you use is that these guys uh, give you the key. They kind of give you the key and you recognize that you're in a cage. You know what I mean? That's really what ends up happening is that, you know, they plan, they, they give you a key. You're like, damn, what the, f- I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a cage in the first place. You know, they don't even have to really, uh, Put it out there like that's why I said I just made a video about this talking about how I became an ad cap long before I even picked up a rock bar book because I was reading guys that weren't really, you know, ad caps and they were just I just took that what they were saying to the logical conclusion. You know what I mean? I was saying like, all right, well, government sucks in every aspect. Why does government have to exist in the first place? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I was just taking things to the to the logical, uh, you know, conclusion, taking it all the way. And I think that's where a lot of people fail and uh, are minarchists. But that's where they fail. You know what I mean? Is that they 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 understand it, but they don't they don't take it like all all the way. They they kind of hit a hit a block. I and think they it's, say, well, I think it's that last bit of fear though that statism ha- you know puts in your brain. I think that's why a lot of people are minarchists. So mo- most people aren't. Most minarchists don't even know they're minarchists until you say, "Hey, you're a minarchist." Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. they're like, "Whoa, I've never heard that." And I think kind of when you hear the word minarchist, and then you read about anarchists, you're like, "Wait, minarchist doesn't make any sense anymore." Nope. And 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 I don't think anybody that once they really delve into it or has like a really an honest conversation with an anarchist, uh, they uh, they never really think about these things. I don't think it's a thought. I don't think they think about this thing and go, "No, minarchy is still minarchy is still the logical well, of position." Course, cause we, we need we, we need ten percent of the cancer, dude. Okay, we we only need ten percent of the STD. We need ten percent of of parasites on the on if the just ten percent right? of the babies live. All right, because <laughs> because because government is the necessary evil has become axiomatic to these folks. Oh, man. It's, it's it is it is man. it is pa- it is pounded in you know it's I mean it was pounded into my head too just like I'm sure it was you guys it's like at John school Locke. you know yeah Locke it, 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 that's exactly what it was it, it was Locke he screwed it up man because even though a lot of those uh, guys were they were they were they were kind of going that route without I mean you look at kind of history. And how, you know, the, I guess the U.S. government w- was formed. And if they had just, I mean, took it to the logical conclusion, they would not have built built a government. But oh, you no. Had guys, you know, guys, you know guys I, like I, 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 read, I, read, I read Rothbard's For a New Liberty. And then after I got done reading the book, I, I've never really told anybody this. I thought if I could time warp back to where they were drafting the second constitution, or whatever you call the United States, the 97 constitution. If I could go back to like and just just appear 80, in front of all of them. Eighty-seven. No. Uh, so seventy-six. 80, yeah, 80, 87, 87. eighty-seven. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, appear right in front of them, it, like like an alien. Just boom. I'm from 2016. Here's where you fucked up on the Constitution. If I came back to 2016, would we still have the government the same way? And I still think there's no way I could fix the Constitution. I've tried to. There's no way you can legitimize theft. You can't. If the constitu- if you if the if the constitution cannot levy taxes, the government doesn't exist. Nope. Yep. But Dave, no, if we just change the name from taxes to to <laughs> something else, it, the language maybe, maybe, sites, I will language make, sites will always let's just change the, name, oh. change the name. <laughs> That's, That's what, the of course. <laughs> no, it, it, no, it's, it's, but again, I mean, if they if they were just you know, Locke was the guy that he even said it. I mean, and that's that's what got kind of pisses me off about with, with Locke because. He recognizes that he he was saying that even at its I mean government at its at its minimal is still a coercive act. And I'm like, what the like if you if you know that, why the hell why 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 let it exist? Why well, allow this to exist? Well, even well, I think even 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 somebody like Bastiat, for the most part, who was you know had some who wrote some amazing things in the end, still I don't think he ended up coming to the conclusion that the government wasn't necessary. You know, right. it, he, uh, well, he died young. Maybe, maybe give him a, give him a couple. Yeah, of <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, he but didn't live as long as Spooner. Now, come on. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. obviously. Yeah, I guess. Okay, we'll, we'll give him a break there. But. Plus, he was French. He was I don't know. I just to die early anyway, and he didn't have a beard. All right, no beard. But yeah, but I mean, the, 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 the con- <laughs> he had no beard. The no Constitution. Beard. I didn't even read his book. No beard. No beard. No book. No beard. No book. 
Oh, <laughs> no, th- this explains Dave so much more now to me. <laughs> <laughs> now I really get it. Oh, I, no, you don't. Buddy. No. <laughs> anyway. I don't even get it. Well, I no, just, but... I, I was just going to say, I wish, I just wish more people would, I obviously re- recognize this, but I don't know. I just wish more people would just figure it out so we could just walk away instead of trying to <laughs> figure out all this, play these silly games. Well, and... I think I mean... the internet's going to, just destroy the governments. I think I mean, I you're seeing so. it happen. Oh, I would hope so. I would hope, it's, so. It's putting so much information out there. Um, and uh, I would think that the, the the point of history and learning history is to, because you, you see them and you see the mistakes, that is like the trial and error. And it's like <laughs> governments have failed and failed and failed. So how about we just try not to do this government thing? You know what I mean? Like, let, let's give that a shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? But again, it, it, it's so frustrating um, to see guys. Um, and this is one of the new methods that I've tried. I've actually been somewhat successful in converting a lot of Texas uh, people in the, in the anarchists. It's funny because, you know, Dave, Dave mentions how a lot of these guys appeal to authority. That's that's really uh, what they do um, and why they reject uh, people like us. Uh, but, you know, you can refer to some, and this is the funny thing about about uh, United States. And, and it also t- it also tells you how, if you want to call them the founders, how they, they somewhat got it, but then they just didn't extend it to its conclusion. Because you look at, like, the Declaration of Independence and how it literally is in there, and it says that, it, I guess it permits, the magic paper permits, even though I didn't sign it, the magic paper says that you can abolish your government. It's I mean, I didn't make this, the, the paper. And then it contradicts it. itself yeah. later on, but yeah, yeah it, it, it does it say says that. that. It says that the Texas kind, I was talking about this earlier, like, this is how I convert Texas uh, a lot of Texas, like, state is, you know, I've had a lot of success in saying that, you know, because the thing about uh, when you talk about abolition of government, they think it's so abnormal. They can't fix their, fix their mind or the, the, the existence of a mere existence of a government not, or I guess government not existing. They can't fix their mind around it. But some of these documents and some of these constitutions uh, that they cling to, it, it's in there. So even the papers that you cling to, that I didn't sign, but the papers that you cling to even says that, Abolition of government isn't isn't abnormal. In the Texas, I mean, Article Two of the of the Texas, uh, you know, state uh, the uh, Constitution, um, you know, Article One, excuse me, Section Two, it says that the people reserve the rights to abolish the government. Like that, that I I, I don't know. It, it, to me, that's it worked. That has been kind of a method to say, all right, if you want to appeal to authority. And you cling to your government magic papers so much, even your government magic papers say. So my thing is like, all right, let how about you, how about this? We go abolish the government, and you can pretend that the magic papers are permitting, I guess, you to do that. So <laughs> what you wrong with? That's, that's fine. The magic papers are saying that it, you know it's giving you the permission, and you believe that it's giving you permission. Whatever, we're still we're still out there trying to um, abolish government. So we're coming to the same conclusion. I'm saying that I'm I, I want to do it because I want to be a free man, and you can say that you want to do it because the magic papers uh, allowed <laughs> you to do it. So whatever. Let's just let, let's abolish the magic papers, but. <laughs> I, the one, the one thing I did want to say since we ended up going in this direction was because uh, I mentioned it earlier and, and one of the questions I had actually got which tied uh, before the show when David asked if anybody you know had anything they wanted to ask you which kind of ties into this is you were saying that the you know you, you you've kind of converted a couple of Texans with this method stuff have you dealt with and or even had any luck with uh, people who are actually in like the Texas secessionist movement. Because those are the guys that actually freak. Those those are the ones that usually worry me the most. Because those usually seem to be the ultra patriot guys that wanna 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 secede, but they just want to form their own government. <laughs> right. Well, those those guys. I mean, it's kind of a they have good aspects, great aspects, and they have bad. Like uh, like the bad aspect is you know you like you said they do are uh, they're kind of so patriotic and so so passionate. Uh, that they want to really just form their uh, their own government um, as opposed to just claiming this, uh, not really claim, not claiming anything, but saying that this ter- territory does not have legitimate uh, uh, rulers. I would think that would be the more logical uh, conclusion. But it, it, it's tough with those guys because in, in the same respect, these are some of the guys that would actually go do something. Like if I, the guys that are in like the test of secession, uh, movements and, uh, you know, like a lot of these uh, private militias and things like that. These are the guys that, you know, I just from a, I guess when you talk about that action, if I wanted to get a group of guys or uh, a group of guys and we wanted to 
go, I guess, over here in this part of Texas, and we went, wanted to go to the local sheriff's office and say, say you know what, your services ain't going to be needed over here. Uh, we got this. These are going to be the guys that are at least about that action and ballsy enough to, because in my own experience, they are ballsy, which I give them that much credit. They're ballsy enough. Oh, to, I think Texas will be the first states to secede if the dollar right. collapses. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it, these guys are ballsy enough. So it's kind of like you want to, you want to, I don't want to say work with them. Uh, you respect that part of them because they're ballsy, but you're right. Because those guys are scary in terms of the the, the other, they they just they get it wrong, they get it right to an extent, <laughs> and then they just they hit that left turn and like, well, we're just gonna form a uh, a new a new government, and I'm like, that's not really well, solving the problem, man. Like, it isn't, and and you look at all the companies that have moved to to Cali- or from California to Texas, uh, an independent Texas with a super low corporate tax rate would probably be something that a lot of those corporations are looking for. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because they don't care about patriotism or nationalism. These corporations don't they care about money. That, that's exactly what they care about. And, and this is why you see guys coming out here. You know, we don't have an income tax. Uh, we don't have. So, again, you have people that are going to have more money to be able. I mean, again, this is basic economics. But because they're not taxed, uh, you know, we're not taxed on our income. Uh, even our people that are lower, I guess, um, in terms of actual income they have a lot more buying power you know because uh, you know they're not taxed and a lot of things are cheaper you know uh property even though people like to say that we have profit uh, like we have high property taxes that is a is, is a big myth i mean like our our property tax is like half a percentage higher than the national average and i mean that, that's it it's nothing like to be like it doesn't like equal itself out at least in terms of the fact that we don't have an income tax we have lax um, in terms of labor laws, our, our labor laws are more lax because we are a, you know, kind of, they call it a right to work, but you can be fired for anything. You can be hired for uh, anything and you can part ways with with businesses. It goes both ways. Um, and you don't have that kind of the constraints that um, a lot of states like California have. So you have these businesses come out and I'm always looking, and it's not like that just in Texas. You go look at businesses like uh, other countries. Uh, it's across the board. It's almost not up for uh, up for debate, really. The ones that are more economically free are the ones that are doing better. They have higher yep. standards standards of living. You know what I mean. So you look when you look at things like that, and uh, I don't know why you would want to why places like even like California exist where they think, all right, well, in order to correct our problems, we're going to raise the taxes. You know what I mean? And we're going to have more laws. We're going to raise the minimum wage. You're gonna it's double just it. so scary, man. T- California, they have one in five Americans live in California. And mm-hmm. California just said, oh, hey, federal government, by the way, we're $114 billion in the deficit this year. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's scary, man. It's absolutely Cause scary. Because all the companies that were paying taxes in California have left. When Marxists come in and they take over the politicians and they take over the policies, they drive out people that have to worry about their bottom line mm-hmm. until Absolutely. they take over, until the Marxists take over everything, and then they can kick those people out or kill them. Yep. So, That's what they want. Right. That's exactly what they want. That's exactly what they want, but it's, I don't think it's realistic in, in, in today's – capitalism can't be stopped now. Yeah. Capitalism cannot be stopped now due to the internet. Absolutely no. If yeah, you look at every form of if you look at every form of government, it's just a way to control capitalism. That's, that's, it's just that's, a different. If it's a different way to try to control capitalism, that, that's exactly what it is. Capitalism is the worst enemy, you know, to the state. You know what I mean? They don't want that. They don't want that. Why would you want people being able to? Because when people are able to freely exchange with each other, you figure out the uh, the, the need for government is not is not a necessity. You know what I mean? They need they need socialism. Like so, governments need uh, this whole I- idea that uh, we're we're helping you out, and uh, you know we have to you know exist and and whatnot. So, because capitalism uh, is about free markets, private property, uh, self ownership, and things like that. You know, with doing all of these voluntary exchanges, people are figuring out answers uh, to to a lot of these questions that uh, these people have, you know, questions to things like poverty, capitalism figure, figures that out, freely exchanging and ra- raising people's uh, standard of living. So the government, they don't want that. Yeah. Well said. You're right. <laughs> they want everybody on their backs waiting to get rocked to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they want. 
Yeah. Now, I, I'm going to end with, uh, I, I heard a, um, a Walter Block uh, interesting quote about foreign aid, and he's like, he's like, instead of sending foreign aid to these, uh, to these like, African countries, why don't we just tell them to raise the minimum wage so they can, <laughs> they can produce? <laughs> they don't need the money, okay? Just tell them to raise the minimum wage, they'll get their extra money, yeah. right? Apparently, it boosts productivity. <laughs> yep, it works like that. It helps, it, helps, it helps the poor. Uh, and then, so yeah, it helps the poor. Yeah. Just ta tax, you know, increase the you know tax rate. It'd be fine. That, that is, uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that is that is such a such a simple minimum concept wage too. Is the most stupid idiot thing I've ever heard. Long. <laughs> you know what it is? No, no, it's not that. Like I know we're about to go, and I know yeah. I've said it like ten times on the show, but minimum wage has always been used to control minorities because the factory owners and the business owners are usually the majority population, and if they can hire other majority population. Uh, for the the same rate that they could a minority, uh, they're gonna hire the majority every time. It, so it, it's simple. It's and, simple. And I left out race and all of that. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're in Bangkok, Thailand, and there's a minority. It doesn't matter if you're anywhere. If minimum wage screws over everybody. <clears throat> Absolutely. If you don't believe me, look up African American youth unemployment rate. <laughs> All, so, always, so, always double the national national average. Always eliminate, so, eliminate, uh, lim make the uh, make the minimum wage nothing, <laughs> and watch how fast that number plummets to uh, really and legalize drugs. Uh, black community, bam, wham, thank you, ma'am, is back on top. Yep, easily. That's so, simple. So, Dave, does that mean you're a Trump supporter or what? <laughs> hey, you can't stump the Trump man. <laughs> no, I'm not no damn Trump supporter. <laughs> Uh, Trump but, uh, for imaginary sky government. <laughs> nice, uh, but great having you on, uh, Eric. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I hope your uh, your song goes viral. I'm sure, I don't know if it's considered viral already, but uh, looks like it's doing good. So uh, I'm glad to see you're getting the the support from the uh, the volunteers community. So I hope that keeps up. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Well, what's your what favorite quote, this? man? What's your oh, favorite quote? Man. Before we go. Favorite. Ooh, favorite quote. That, that's tough. Uh, I have a few Airy July quotes I like. Man, I, I have a bunch <laughs> of them, man. But uh, it's funny that we were just talking about, uh, you know, uh, minimum wage, and we're talking about Walter Williams, and he has so much good, good, good commentary in which he says, like, you know, he one of his quotes it goes something like, you know, he has a great idea. He say, "You keep what you earn, I keep what I earn." He say, "If you don't agree, okay, tell me how much of my money is your money." Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, yep, that's that's the best way to put it. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Awesome. Yeah, man, I that's... I love backwards. I keep doing it, man. Don't stop. Yeah, absolutely. If Appreciate Rage it. Against the Machine can get up there and spout their leftist bullshit, <laughs> please get out there and spout our bullshit. <laughs> we'll do. It. Well, our, it is a, ours is a bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Smooth, Dave. Real smooth. <laughs> Well, everyone's got their belief system, right? And that's what BS is. Bullshit. Beliefs. Nice. <laughs> All right. Anything, anything you want to say, Jeremy, before we go? No, man. It was, it was, it was great finally getting you on, man. Uh, this, was a, this was a very entertaining and uh, informative conversation. I hope people uh, check this one out and uh, really, really – you know, you're, you're again, like we, you know, we talked about your your perspective because of the way everybody's built to, for the most part, conditioned to view race. You know, people like you run counter to that. So hopefully, more people will actually pay attention. And you know, it, it, it's sad because you know the the ancoms and people like that will probably call that exploitation. But you know what? You're doing you're appropriating it. Appropriating you're, you're, their victimhood. You're, you're doing it voluntarily. So f yeah. Them. So yeah, yeah man. Absolutely. The, absolutely. I, I I I I agree with what Dave said. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I I I fully support it, and uh, I try to you know help promote you any way I can. So keep it up, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Awesome, awesome conversation, gentlemen. Uh, so if anybody wants to help us out, uh, you can do so just by liking this video, uh, commenting, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel yes. um, on um, on YouTube or iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, you can also donate to us via bitcoin or patreon patreon.com slash seeds of liberty to help us out dollar show yeah, is yeah. all we ask value for value if you find value in this content please patronize it and uh you can you will see more of it and <laughs> that's how that's how free market capitalism works right you want to see, see more of something you uh vote with your dollars more, only democracy has support uh so awesome conversation gentlemen thank you very much so this is the uh, seeds of liberty podcast wishing everyone have a wonderful day take care
Peace. Right. Peace. Google volunteerism, I guess. <laughs> All right, I got. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your